night before Tampa Pro. <laughs> I mean, that is that is unbelievably funny. Hey, did you know? Did you? I'm gonna tell this. Did you know I scored all of our first quarter points my, my, in my first start against Tampa Pro? Yep. I mean, we were losing. Four, we were losing fourteen to three at the end of the first quarter. Points my, my, in my first oh, start. I hit Tampa. three. Yep. We, that that is so funny, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we are live without a net. Uh, alumni <laughs> podcast season two, episode twelve. We put this together quickly, and I could not say no to this man. He is a legendary figure in Bayshore history, and we just spent fifteen minutes just going over a few stories, and I'm already laughing my head off. So it's going to be awesome. We are here with Scott Crone, class of 1995. Uh, thank you for joining us, Scott. I got uh, Missy Cabot coming in, so hold on one second. Let me let her in. <laughs> it's just going to be a great night, everyone. It's going to be a great night. Uh, we are we have got the all star cast tonight. So I think that, are we good, Melissa? Can you hear us? I can hear you. <laughs> so uh, we we're already on the air. And just the poster behind you, we've got Scott Crone. Is, yeah, I mean, Scott Crone traveling the world. This is going to be a star-studded Bayshore Christian evening. We can't thank you guys enough for joining us. And uh, I mean, I, I can't control the laughter. We'll go right into it. Scott, we're going to start first with what's been happening since uh, graduation. Uh, tell us about your travels, because it looks like you know, you're traveling the country. Give us a little background on what's been happening since 1995. All right. Yeah, I'll try to sum it up as quick as I can. Um, ended up graduating from Florida State. <laughs> I had two, two job offers. It was Enterprise Rent-A-Car and USA Insurance. And I have an IT degree. And I was like, I'll do this insurance thing for like a couple of weeks, collect a couple of paychecks. And that was 20 years ago. <laughs> so I gave 20 years of... Uh, my life to corporate America. And about two years ago in 2020, I had a serious uh, concerning health issue and didn't think I was going to make it at times. Um, and so uh, it, it made me kind of take a step back and reprioritize and take account and, and inventory of my life and, and decided that, you know, I've already done the first 20 years given to corporate America. I don't want to give the next 20. So I'm going to, um, I bought a brand new RV and now I'm traveling the U S I've been doing it for about six months now. Um, I like, I love national parks, sporting events. So I've been all over so far in just six months and I plan to do this for another year or two, kind of quote unquote, find myself. Um, but also too, you know, I, I figure this is the healthier way to do my midlife crisis versus like, you know, dating a Hooters waitress and buying a sports bar. So, you know, I felt like this is a better option for me anyway. So, um, yeah, I'm just traveling the U S I still work, uh, in insurance, I work for progressive insurance as a trainer and an underwriter. And I live in a van, and it's awesome. That, that is awesome to hear. And I'm very glad that you're pursuing more Christian virtue in your midlife crisis than going to Hooters. That sounds like a positive development. Yes, uh, I have matured slightly in my age. Old age. <laughs> Just a little bit. M Melissa, I've got so many questions. I'm going to ask you if you have some, and you usually tell me, I just got on, Steve, I'm not ready. Do you have some questions to start with, Scott? Scott, where have you been all my life? I haven't seen you since like, I don't know, 1995. What year did you graduate? 95. And now you're living the dream in the RV at the national parks. Right. I'm the creepy old guy at the, at the uh, trailer park. <laughs> I'm so happy for you. And I wish I could be taking pictures in all those national parks. Yeah. I, I just left the Grand Canyon. I was there last weekend. Oh, man. Awesome. I've been wanting to go back there and look at the stars since I was 13 years old. We went there on a family trip, and my dad made us, he woke me up when I was asleep, how dare he, to get out at like midnight and look at the stars. And I was so mad because, you know, that's what I did when I was a teenager, and I just complained the whole time. But I've never, ever, ever, ever forgotten those stars at night in the Grand Canyon and wanted to go back and see that again. So I love that other people are. Still going out there looking at the stars. We've got, it's awesome. I, yeah. I tried to do a 15-mile hike, but I only made it eight miles. So I was like, nope. You could make the full 15. You're in great shape. Uh, 
we've got two 1990 superstars. Melissa, if you can on your end real quick, try to see if the volume, it's coming in really loud on our end. Um, like so, yelling? <laughs> no, 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 I mean, but, but it, it's, it's great. But if you could lower it just a little, I've already got somebody on Facebook. Jared Piazza says, looking good. We've got some people watching. So it's really gonna be a great night. So Scott, uh, graduate Bayshore class of 1995. Um, you go to Florida State, uh, you're in a fraternity. Um, that, that happens before you get into the corporate world. And you told me a story off the air. It's a really cool story about a fraternity brother that happened to be from Tampa. And ATO apparently was Tampa guy. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I didn't, I'm not a big fraternity guy, or at least I wasn't. But my the guy I moved up to Tallahassee with, he was. And, and uh, there's a fraternity called ATO. But the nickname for it is All Tampa Organization because it's all a bunch of kids from like Plant and Jesuit and Berkeley Prep and all that. But anyhow, so one of the kids, he's actually from Tampa. He's not a kid, he's a grown man now. But um, his name is Burt Kreischer. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of him. He's, he's a pretty fairly famous stand-up comedian. And he's, get, he's coming out with a movie and like uh, – uh, in early 2022, I'm sorry, 2022, I should say. Uh, and it's about, it's a story about him when he joined the Russian mafia for a short term, when he went as an exchange student over to Russia. And if you just Google the, the machine and Bert and just hear him tell the story, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty entertaining story, but anyhow, um, yeah, he's, he's coming out with a movie and I just thought I'd share since, uh, you know, go support a local home, hometown kid. So uh, there you go. That is I mean, you stuff up. Oh, oh, oh. one last thing I want to tell about him is uh, so when he was in college, um, Rolling Stone heard about him apparently. This guy was a legend, whatever, for partying. Um, so, so Rolling Stone comes down and follows him for a week and does a whole like nine page layout of, of his life at Florida State. And Oliver Stone, the famous director, I guess reads the article and wants to do a, like a life story, like a movie about his life story just at Florida State. So apparently in Hollywood, how this works, not that I'm a Hollywood insider or anything, but like you bring in writers and you have them write a script based on his experience at Florida State. And so Oliver uh, Stone went through all the, the scripts and didn't find one that he liked. So he's like, screw it, guys, I'm not going to do this. So one of the writers took his script and took it down the street to National Lampoon and it eventually becomes uh, um, Van, Van Wilder. Wilder. Van Wilder. <laughs> So Van Wilder is based on a kid from like Berkeley Prep slash Jesuit. So the Berkeley Jesuit dude has Ryan Reynolds playing him in a movie. Was it yeah. Ryan Reynolds? Yeah. Yeah. That is that is classic. What I got another true. guy on Facebook saying hello, Tree White, uh, former. Oh, teammate. I got some stories about Tree. <laughs> it was all the same year. <laughs> Let's get right into it. Give us some Tree. We love us some Tree. <laughs> tree. <laughs> All right. The first time, the first time I, I I met Tree, he did, he was literally talking trash to me. So he was on the it was it was open gym, in the middle of the game. He was standing on the block, and I was in the corner at the three point line. He goes, he started like talking trash to me on the saying he was gonna block my shot. I was like, dude, there's no way you're gonna block my shot. He goes, shoot it. He takes two steps, and I shoot it, and he and he sends it behind me off the off the back of the wall. And I was like, God, I need to get some arc on my shot or something. So I was, I was like, I'm glad he's on my team. And then the second thing I would say about Tree was he was totally like the, like he, if you played football, he, he would be wide receiver and he'd be like one of those divas. He could not tell you enough about getting him the ball. And I remember after the state final game, um, I actually got in at the, at the end and I threw him um, an alley-oop, no look alley-oop, right? And he dunked it. And uh, after the game, he was pissed at all the guards. Like, Nobody, why didn't y'all give me the ball? You should have given me the ball. And he started yelling at me. I was like, Tree, I was the one who threw you an alley. He goes, oh, yeah, that was cool. And he just kind of moved on. But he was he was like the wide receiver D, like Terrell Owens. But I loved him. He was, he was awesome. Tree is, uh, sending the, Tree is sending a lot of laughing emojis on Facebook. That That is really funny. I mean, we just lost in 94. I think we lost by like 35 points to Malone. Yeah. And uh, oh. his first reaction, yeah, his first reaction is, so, nobody's throwing me the ball. Yeah. <laughs> Except for you got him lost. Well, that was pretty much every game, but I love yeah. Treat. I mean, hey, listen, he's a competitor. He wanted the ball. And if you don't want the ball, you know, then he should be playing. So, Melissa, do you remember these? Weren't you at the 94? Oh, yeah. You injured leg. Uh, did you have an injured injury that year or were you cheering? Yes, I did. Uh, yeah, that was not from gymnastics or from, you know, 
the cheerleaders tossing me up in the air and catching me or anything like that. It was from walking on the Joy property to take cheerleading pictures, like right before the big, yeah, the big day, the big game. So we went up there and I had to be on crutches and I couldn't tumble. I couldn't. Oh, man, I was so sad. So sad. <laughs> but well, sorry. sorry that but, happened. Getting a lot of uh, loving hearts that are being posted by the guys that are watching uh, with towards you on here. So we're thankful that you joined us. You know, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I well, the hearts were for her, for me. Well, that's a very good point. I mean, it could have been for Scott. Tree yeah. White does say he loves you online. So maybe that that was meant for you. Uh, oh, so um, speaking of, you mentioned, well, we mentioned off the air, but he's posted here on Facebook, John Arbel. Scott was a great shooter, even in middle school, great Bayshore guy. So when you've got an original gangster posting, let's go right into your John Harville stories. Yeah, so John Harville, he was super, I remember, I don't, I remember that he was super intense uh, coach. He's great. Very knowledgeable. Oh, no. Super intense. I was like, I was like, you know, talking to some of the guys like, dude, does he know this is like eighth grade basketball, right? <laughs> we're not, we're not going to the pros guys. Um, but super intense, hilarious. I remember, um, I remember one time though, he got, he, he got me pretty good. So we were coming out of a timeout and I, for some reason I couldn't go in. I wasn't, this, I, this I, is uh, this is eighth, this is eighth grade. Oh yeah, okay, I apologize. Let me take a step back. So yeah, Harville was my first coach for organized basketball from what I remember. So um, learned a lot from him, uh, you know, as far as like basic, you know, base short plays, was it over, overload, three down, you know, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But he was super intense. And I was, for whatever reason, I was, we, were, we were in timeout and um, I was trying to go, I was supposed to go back in the game, but I couldn't for some reason. And I, I go, I go, coach, I, I can't go back in right now. I go, I'm running out of steam. And he just stops the huddle. And he turns around and he looks at me, he goes, you're out of steam. Or, do you think, what do you think you're Michael Jordan? And everybody started laughing at me. So that was, yeah, that was, that was one memory that I have about being, you know, just tormented by Coach Harville. And then um, the other one was, and he actually got me really good on this one. Um, so there were times where we have to go to the YMCA and practice, right? And uh, I guess maybe the gym was getting cleaned or whatever, they were re refinishing it or whatever. And so the girls varsity would practice right next to us. And I used to have a crush on Amanda Bush back then. She was my Winnie Cooper. Amanda. Yeah. And so um, we didn't have practice jerseys. So we, at the end of practice, when we would scrimmage, we'd go shirts and skins. Right. And um, <laughs> I, I used to get petrified to take my shirt off because I was so skinny. Right. I mean, my nickname was bony crony. That's not very white. Good. You were also huh? very, very, very neon pale, like way white. Yeah. You no, were... I, I, I glow in the dark. Yeah, I know. It was a fluorescent type of situation. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you never get lost in the dark if you're with me because I just, you know, show you the way out. <laughs> but look so, at you um, now. So, anyways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, I, so I used to fake an asthma attack because I'm asthmatic. I used to fake oh. an asthma attack. So I didn't have to think of, if, I, if I thought he was going to take my make me take my shirt off, right? And so he finally caught caught on to what I was trying to do, and he goes, he goes, crew. Get over here and take your damn shirt off. And uh, oh, I'm sorry, darn shirt off. He didn't. He didn't curse. Coach Harvey never cursed. Um, <laughs> and so, um, and so I finally, I didn't want to do it because the girls were practicing right next to us, right? And I didn't want them to see me with my shirt off playing basketball. So I was like, fine. He goes, Crow, if you don't take your shirt off right now, you're not going to start next game. And I go, okay. So I take my shirt off and I'm trying to run behind the guys so I'm not seen by the girls. And then all of a sudden they get done early. And, and I remember like it was yesterday, it was Amanda Bush and Carrie Polero and they were walking by and Amanda Bush looks at Carrie Polero and says, oh my God, look at Scott Crone. Isn't that the grossest thing you've ever seen? Oh man. That's I went home and asked my, my parents for a, a, a membership to the YMCA to start working out. And I remember. That's I right. Remember the transformation. Yeah, yeah, so. So it had a positive influence that moment in your in your life. It had a positive influence. No thanks to John Harville, but yeah, I did. <laughs> oh guys, I gotta take this call from my kids. I'm super no sorry. Absolutely, no problem. Uh, I don't even want to mute this. Oh, no problem at all. And if you have to go off the screen, no problem at all. Um, we've got a legendary Hi, baby. here with Melissa. I mean, so we got to do it. Wait one second. Um, 
I've got Justin uh, Wine and Fake AAU online. Mute. Did she? I think you're muted. I think you're good. If you can hear us, we can't hear you. So you're good. Scott, Justin Wine is posting online AAU. What does that mean? Do you know? Um, no, I mean, I dominated AAU. That's what he's referring to. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so why he, he was, probably remembers I, tell him tell him that yeah tell him uh, ask him what the story's about or justin hey man what's what's the story about yeah justin let remember. us know because we're not we're not sure so let us know tree has got more uh i don't know what he's saying he's saying no exclamation point with a bunch of smiling emojis um john harville or justin Wyatt writes in harville so he's probably got some harville stories we've got a big audience tonight uh scott right now you're running about third highest ever behind the 1990s cheerleaders and uh, Coach Volpe. So you're like third highest ever right now. That's pretty amazing. Awesome. Um, Mike Rudolph says, what's up? Uh, what's up, Crone? Ah, Rudolph. Yeah, man. And uh, Tree is laughing about the YMCA story. Well, if only, if only we needed Amanda on here because she was, she was on for the 90s cheerleaders. If she was on, if, she, if only she could see you now. You would no longer be bony crony or illuminescent in the dark because uh, you're, you know, workout king. So that's really good. Um, so that's really good on the Harville story. I want to now move to. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to move to uh, Jan Bennett stories. So uh, for our uh, audience, obviously, there's a great uh, intersection between Robinson Plant, Bayshore Christian Academy of Holy Names. We've talked about this in previous podcasts all that South Tampa connection. And uh, Scott, apparently you wanted to go uh, uh, to Robinson your sophomore year, you called your parents bluff. Tell us tell us a story that leads into these Bennett stories. Yeah, I actually didn't want to go to Robinson. I wanted to go to Plant High School. And um, I lived one street out of the district and I, I wanted to use my grandmother's address to, to go to Plant because a lot of my friends were going to Plant and they were wanting me to come play ball um, with them in high school. So. Um, I, that's what I wanted to do. And my parents wouldn't lie. They wanted me to go to Bayshore. They wouldn't lie for me or let me lie about my address. So they were like, you have two. And my grandparents wanted to send me to Jesuit. And I did not want to go to an old guy school. And I wasn't going to fit in there anyway. I was a huge dork regardless. But um, I. Uh, um, Speaking of that. What'd you say? <laughs> Missy oh. has very interesting interjections. Very, They're always very good. Yeah, yeah. So, so, tell, your story, so, tell your story. Tell your story. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, anyhow, so I called her bluff, and I ended up going to Robinson, which was so so wrong for me in so many ways. I mean, first, I, I was I had to take the bus to school, and I was the first pickup, so like six fifteen every morning. Oh, oh torture. God. Just out of my, my my first class was driver's ed, and for those of you that remember Robinson back in the day, it was right next to uh, the projects called Rembrandt. And in order to get to the driving, the driver's range where all the cars were for driver's ed, you had to walk through the projects to the driving range. And it was like my first week or first, second week there. And I'm, I'm, we're walking to the driver's range. And all of a sudden, this kid comes out of, of uh, Rembrandt and he, and he has a kitten and he punts the cat and the cat goes end over end and falls down and doesn't move. And I'm and I just keep walking. I'm like, what is going on here? What have I got myself into? Not good. So <laughs> we, get to the, we get to the driver's range. And I lose control of the car at one point and I hit like, I hit a stop sign and some other oh, sign man. and I didn't, I didn't up the car. Well, what I didn't realize was a lot of the teachers took home, the cars would drive them as kind of like to and from school as a kind of a perk for being a teacher there. Well, I, I banged up uh, coach Bennett's car <laughs> and I didn't know coach Bennett at the time. And so when I went to try out, he pretty much made a beeline to me and let me know that he knew that I messed up his car. <laughs> so I already got from a bad foot to begin with. And, um, you know, I was, I was a private school kid. They smelled the fear on me coming from a mile away. I mean, I was whatever. I mean, it toughened me up a little bit, but the other Bennett story, well, we, I know I can't tell one coach Bennett story. Steven already talked about that one, but another one I can tell is during tryouts or practice or whatever, I get a, I get a, a breakaway and I go up for a left-handed dunk. Of course I can't just go up and do a right-handed dunk. I have to do left-handed dunk because I'm an idiot. <laughs> and I brick it and but when I brick it I when I come down I kind of somehow lose my footing and I fall down and I end up on my back and I'm just like looking up all of a sudden 
like being with like 10 seconds, Coach Bennett is straddling me, overtopping me, just cursing me out, taking, telling me to go back to Bayshore where I came from. He doesn't want me. And just like nonstop and like just, just oh my God, it was hilarious looking back on it. But I was, I was scared. So oh, <laughs> long story short, I didn't last that long on that team. Um, I kind of got over it, but that's my Chan Bennett story. Well, you were better off coming back. I mean, because, oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I didn't want, gonna... I didn't want to go there anyway. I just want, right. I wanted to go to plant, but I called my parents bluff. And... So <laughs> yeah, Me Melissa, please, please. This is important. I, I do need to ask Scott what when you were walking through the Rembrandt projects. I don't know if you guys can see this. Was it before or <laughs> after? Was it before or after this stage right here? Because this was in the Bayshore parking lot in 1994. I don't know. When did you graduate? I mean, I was probably dating John John. I don't know. Ninth grade. That was probably, you guys were older, but. Um, That's the crone mobile. That, well, hey, listen, I got that. Coach, it kind of looks like a that. driver's ed car. The kind with the brake on the other side, you know, no. the driver can slam. I mean, the um, passenger can slam on the brakes. It was like, was it prophetic? I don't know. Listen, Valdez got me that that car. You know that, right? Because you went no, to the basketball base. No, show. tell that story. Tell that story. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that. No, no. If you, you get your best players like that, you're going to get them like real cars. You, giving me a 1989 Yugo, I think that's a sign that, that he doesn't want me to come play. Can I help? That's what Bennett did to try to give you a hint. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I remember, I remember getting Jonathan Johnson. I think Tree, I got Tree in there. And how did, how did uh, Tree I know you guys you? were like clowns. It was maybe, like, maybe it, it was, was like, it, yes, it was like number one. It was like clowns in a car because of <laughs> your number and sardines in a can. But you guys, you're all really tall. Like, how was that even that many of you folded over like that? Like, Tree must have had his knees up by his ears. I don't even see how that was possible, but I remember. Yeah, it was crazy. Hey, do you know how much my parents paid for that that car? All I know is it got their money's worth. Yeah, yeah. They didn't pay any money. They traded our juicer for it, our, our kitchen juicer. <laughs> now, wow. Now here's, here's the deal. It was a top-of-the-line juicer, though. The kitchen juicer. Wait, yeah. wait. All of your teammates are commenting about this story online. Dude, they, or, my teammates used to pick up my car and move it. That's, that's, that's what they're saying. That's what they're saying. Uh, Justin Wine is saying we, we would pick up that Yugo and move it around, and Tree White said, yes, we did it after practice. Uh, I knew Justin was on that team. I thought yeah. Justin was on there. Jimmy Shram is commenting that he would pick up the yeah. Yugo and move it around. Shram? Oh, we talked about this. I'm just going to throw this up. Jimmy Shram, I, I have a, owe you a personal thank you. Or actually, I owe your face a personal thank you. Because because of your face plant before Tampa Prep, I got my first start on varsity. <laughs> guess so that, that's not, I totally, I that's scored, not totally funny because obviously I scored, I scored all of our points in the first quarter on my first start. We were losing 14 to 3, I think, at the end of the first quarter. Oh, <laughs> so I Jimmy. I remember. That's, yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy got hurt bad. Right. Well, I, I make a joke now because he's fine. He's good. Yes. Yes. I know. We all live to tell about it, but I forgot about that. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big that deal. That was my first start. I was. I almost pooped my pants. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, we've I'm talked about it before. We on this podcast many times. We talked about that game, especially the Jonathan Johnson podcast. <clears throat> that game was packed out. I mean, the stage was packed. The media was there. The television was there. It was yep. the biggest high school game in the county up until that point that year. So uh, that was a big, big to do. And uh, yeah, thank you, Shram, I guess, because now Scott got the, all our points in that first quarter. So thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, it would have been 14 to zero if I didn't start. <laughs> do you have any, uh, do you have any really good Shram stories besides that one? Uh, just, uh, I'm gonna throw him under the bus on this one because I, I never got the details on it. I think it was him and Jimmy, I apologize if it wasn't, but didn't you and Rod get sent home during the state tournament for like missing curfew without out with some girls huh <laughs> somebody got sent oh i know roderick was one of them i thought oh. jimmy it was thought it was jimmy and rod but was i'm not sure Shram as well um i'm waiting for Shram to man. comment wait Shram is now with multiple exclamation points Shram is saying no stories no stories so oh whoops all right the fifth <laughs> 
Yeah, so, well, no, no, but we're not going to agree with Jimmy. Give us some, I, some stories. Oh, oh, no, I mean, that, that's, for, with Shram, it was, uh, you know, his, his face got me my first start, and then, um, yeah, and then I just remember, I remember, uh, I thought he got to know him for, for missing curfew, but I don't, those are, the, those are the two ones that stand out for me. That's, that's kind of what I jotted down for Jimmy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, Tree, is, Tree is reminding us, he did tell us that story when we talked about the, uh, we had a po podcast called Last Days of Empire, which was Coach Valdez's last team was y'all's 94 Final Four trip. So he, he told that story. Uh, Wynan is saying, though, that Jimmy did not get sent home. So Justin may be clarifying the record, perhaps. No? You still think it's Jimmy? He, did, he didn't get sent home for, for, for staying out with the girl? Uh, well, why not says no. Was so. it a guy? Did he get home? Did he get sent home <laughs> up with a guy? Uh, that is that is unbelievably funny. Um, John Arvo has another one. Uh, I I think this is back to the AAU thing that Wynett brought up. Harville says I took those guys to West Palm Beach playing an AAU tournament. Does that ring any bells about uh, any funny stories? Oh, uh, I do remember that. I remember we went to the beach one day, but I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't remember anything crazy happening maybe I mean, something you may have i just don't remember it <laughs> this is really awesome for everyone watching we are here with class of 1995 scott crone member of the 94 final 14 last days of empire as well as the 1995 miracle at Ramey team um we've covered a lot of good stories already i'm saving that piazza lab story for last so let's not get to that yet Okay. Looking back, looking back at uh, the 94 team, we really haven't talked much basketball. Do you remember any games from uh, – uh, Melissa's laughing. Yeah, it's funny. We're, this is so much more fun. Uh, okay. I mean, 94, y'all beat everyone, and we've talked about a lot of those games. Is there any games that stick out besides the Tampa prep game that you remember that was important to you, you contributed to? It, there was another funny event at halftime. Coach Valdez's vein is popping out. Give us, Give us a good one. Well, I remember being very frustrated with Bo's dad because he, could, he, would, he would video every game except for the Roosevelt game at home, which I get it. We beat him 140 at eight, but I actually had three dunks that game. Oops. And now I can't even tell the children I don't have. <laughs> What's funny about that is that- You can even Bo, watch him in the RV. Yeah, yeah. And, and Bo very kindly had his father meet me here in Atlanta to deliver like 25 game tapes. There is no Roosevelt Academy tape. So now may, maybe we know why. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember. I remember Valdez, Coach Valdez, saying we don't want to. We don't want to put this one on tape. <laughs> so because I think we beat him like 140 something to yeah. like 20 the first time. So is yeah. that um is that the ones that would like had their jer like their jerseys tucked into their pants and their pants were like way up was, high and was, they were it was for like handicapped kids. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not okay, yes, here. that's like, exactly. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't think, I don't think they could they, like they were mute or they were deaf Plus, or they were Scott. You played in that game. <laughs> one of the few, yeah, one of the few. Buddy, that was like we would have our fifth string in there. Yeah, I, th I had three dunks. <laughs> it was my it was my time to shine. I do remember those games, though. I do. For for people who are watching, we obviously Bayshore being a basketball dynasty, we don't want to play schools with children with disabilities as part of the team. But they were in our district, so we had we actually had to play them that year. So uh, hey, listen, that bumped me from one point five points per game to two point seven. So <laughs> that's I'll the real reason there. that we did that. That's the real reason they worked it into the schedule. <laughs> that's right. That is classic, Scott. That's really a good story. Tell us about. The, so you've already sort of laid out. Justin Winant is is clearly saying that Shram did not get sent home. You okay. believe, you believe it was Shram and Roderick. Tree is laughing at all of us through all of this. Oh, wait, I got another Jimmy Shram. Okay, I don't know that I can say this on the air. So uh, Jimmy Shram's got a story. Oh, God. Uh, so I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna go ahead oh, and uh, let me go ahead and share it. I'll try to use the best words possible. Crone used the bathroom in my hotel room at the state finals and we couldn't get it to flush. It was stuck on the toilet wall. Wine it was there, exclamation point. Now, when you're 50 something years old like myself and you're daily reliving your 16 year old years uh, and your maturity level remains the same, that is a classic comedy story. 
Scott, can so you I verify twice that? Uh, apparently, it just whatever bathroom usage you did okay. uh, was so significant that the toilet did not function. That's the best way I could say it. I'm really well, sorry. I mean, I've always, I've always had an is issue with constipation, but when I when, it, you know, when I had to go, don't be around. So yeah, Jimmy, I apologize, bro. I'm sorry if you like lost some sort of deposit or if the school did. Um, <laughs> lost a deposit. This is this is impact. Uh, he he is commenting again that it, uh, the toilet would not flush. So <clears throat> this has been a this was a huge event apparently back in 1994. Um, so here's another one, John Michael Cabot. Let the debate for the greatest 12th man commence. You, you're higher than 12th man, Scott Crone, right? I mean, you're Scott Crone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is exactly right. So you have to take it up with Melissa's brother. But, um, hey, Scott. So I don't know. What, what grade did you start at Bayshore? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Start it. Look. Oh, you mean as far as school? Start attending basketball. school at Bayshore Christian School. Fourth grade. Because I felt like, I feel like, I mean, I have a ton of memories from basketball and cheerleading those those years. But, um, yeah, I feel like I knew you from at least Bayshore, maybe the church way before that. So I was trying to think, like, when did we really meet? I don't know. But we were kids. And I think we probably, I know you were a little older, but we probably grew up just knowing like all the same people and sort of seeing some of the same Bayshore legacy stuff. Like, yeah, I don't we were church kids. I mean, we were, we were Bayshore kids through and through, right. Whether it was, I remember, you know, obviously class all day, but um, you group on Wednesdays going to church yeah. on Sundays. I mean, I was, I was all about, you know, Bayshore. So my family away from my family. I do remember too. Well, just like, I don't even know what classes we all had together. I do know we had a class with Mr. Hill together, which I don't know what that class would have been because I don't remember that with you. But I remember, a did you take a typing class with Miss Sandage that I was in? I did take a typing oh. class, yeah. There was a bunch of um, basketball players in that class, like Jimmy Schramm, I think. John John was in there. Um, I don't know if you guys remember Richard Mays was in there. There was a bunch of people, but... Uh, yeah, I just remember like every day laughing so hard with you. Like you were just, you know, a lot of people like make you laugh, but you were the guy that just like, I don't remember not laughing with you ever. And the other thing I really remember, go ahead, Steve. No, no. Tell us some of the stories that made you laugh. Give us, give us some. I don't know. I just remember it was super quick and it was super, it was super dry and sarcastic. And it was always like, just never a dull moment. Just like no hesitation. You just what 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 she's trying to say, Steve, is that she enjoyed laughing at me. No, at no, that's not what I meant. I just I think we had a lot of um, I have a lot fun. of good memories with you. I mean, I was a goofball. You know, it was like me me and Bo were, were and Dan you, were, were were both goofballs. Do you remember picking me up with Andy for our double dates? Oh, that now oh. it's getting even better. Who 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 was who was the girl who who was the who was the girl I was with? Um. Well, that was it. I mean, you were just helping oh. us. Out. Oh, breaking news! Breaking news! Who was the girl? Who was, what girl was he with? See, a lot of life has happened since then, so you can tell. Yeah, I mean, Scott if I don't know, she's not going to know. I mean, I don't know why. We asked missed me. each other for a long time. Yeah, but years. Um, I have something hilarious that you wrote in my yearbook that's not oh. really talking about basketball, but I would love to share it. Please, oh please. This is from, I don't know how many you have this one. This is 1994. I have that one. Yes. What grade were you in in 94? Junior. I think I was a junior. Okay. You ready? Am I yelling? Does it sound like my microphone is turned all the way up? I have that one too. That's the next one. It's the one right before that. You know what? Probably all those people, probably tree... I know Amanda Bush is in here. Probably every person we've talked about tonight is in here. But, um, okay. <clears throat> Missy, I'm going to miss you so much. I'm going to miss your annoying voice, your stupid cut downs. <laughs> don't make any sense. Your stupid looks when you look at me and you look constipated. And most of all, <laughs> your bad breath. 
I also really don't appreciate the way you constantly hit on me in Mr. Hill's class. I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to get on the list and wait in line, just like all the other girls. <laughs> I want you to know this is in purple ink, too. But overall, I've enjoyed getting to know you this year. I like your personality and all that other crap. Scott. <laughs> hey, came from the heart. He invested some time. That was like a quality yeah. paragraph. So that's yeah. another one more treasure that I... Missy, I might have been number 20 on the court, but you're number one in the heart right here. Oh, very <laughs> sweet. That is sweet. Oh, man. Classic. <laughs> well, if I hadn't gotten home at like 7, 18, I'd have dug up the other ones too, but we'll just have to save that for a later date. I, I'm still wondering, and I, I might have missed it, who, who was he on the double date with? Like, who was the girl that he was dating with? When I think I was dating back then. I don't know. So <laughs> he just was, so I wasn't allowed to, you know how I wasn't at Britain Plaza when everybody else yeah. was at Britain Plaza. There's lots of things I wasn't doing. And one of them was I wasn't allowed to date, but I could double date. So, right. you know, certain creative minds were able to work out a way where we had two people to pick me up, but it's just that instead of going and picking up a four. So it whoever was, it was. Oh, yeah. right. Oh, I, so there was not a, so I wasn't exact, dating a hot Yes, show. precisely. God. I'm Hello. glad you remember, it seems like M Melissa remembers all this, but Scott, it seems like it's sort of foggy for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm on in the kind of hit or miss, but I, I love to hear stories. I mean, bring it. Okay, so hold on. Online, there has been like a running debate that is occurring online uh, related to the toilet event. Um, so it looks like, you know, Winant is claiming that uh, Shram had to push things down with a toilet paper. Ernie was running a distraction. It seems like this was a major, major fiasco uh, in the hotel. Then uh, Melissa's brother, John Michael Cabot, is pointing out that she found a loophole in the dating rules of her family. And, and in all fairness, a Christian religious family from the 80s, this would have not been strange. The 90s, I know we're starting to get a little more like it's very, very conservative decision making in the Cabot household. I and was late. Good. This was late 90s. This was 96, 90s. I right. was a sophomore and a junior in high school. So they were holding on to the traditional conservatism of, of our faith uh, and making it very difficult for you to be able to go out with your boyfriend. And that, that's normal. That's really good. Uh, and Wynett's got another one here. And with all due respect, I was 12. Scott may have been 11. We were both two skinny white guys that could dunk, and we weren't bad at it. So Wynett is moving beyond the toilet fiasco and moving back to 12-year-old age. So very good. That's well, very Justin, good. thank you for being mature in this situation. Jimmy, <laughs> disappointed. Oh, man. Jimmy Shram. Okay. Does anybody remember Mr. Was it Mr. Thornton? I think in that typing class, like certain oh. times, I think we had Miss Sandage was our teacher. But if she was not there or something, Mr. Thornton would sit in there, and the guys would never shut. Well, I feel like I was the only girl. I don't know. I probably wasn't, but the guys would never shut up. Maybe or actually practice typing. I don't know. I was busy like learning how to do it right. But um, yeah, then he'd make them go stand over by the door in the window and they had to stand with their arms up and they had to cover the glass. He'd be like, why don't you go make yourself useful? <laughs> cover the window. So they had to go stand by the door and then he'd be like, oh, oh, there's some light coming through. And then they, you know, it was fun. It was fun. It was all that the things fun. that teachers, if only I was allowed to do that type of stuff now, it'd be so fun. You can't get away with that now. Yeah, I mean, it's just a different time. And yeah. uh, we're so fortunate, everyone watching, to have two 1990s Bayshore legends with us. Uh, Melissa Charlene, uh, which I know is Missy Cabot, and Scott Crone. Scott, thank you for being here as our guest. <clears throat> so um, we're about 40 minutes in. We like going an hour. So you've got to come up with a whole lot more stories. And there's one that we're going to go ahead and launch into right now. That was one you came up with, and that was the Mr. Piazza lab cloning experiment. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, um, no. So 
I just thought it'd be kind of cool. I was thinking about it. You know, if you, if you could like go into the lab with Mr. Piazza and clone like the ultimate base for a basketball player, you know, I, you know, you have five attributes and you put, you put the basketball player that you think has the, that attribute, the best of all time, you know, as far as base for players. So I have, um, you mean besides you, because obviously you could be, well, yeah. All right. Yeah. Look, that's, that's a great point, Steve. So everybody's natural instinct is going to be to put my name for all of these. And I get that. I get that. I mean, I, I, get, I get asked a lot, you know, Hey Scott, what position did you play in high school? And it, I was like, I really didn't play a position. I mean, if you had to, if you had to box me in and, and tell me what position I play, I guess I would say superstar. <laughs> um, Steve, it was my job to put butts in the stands and I get it. I didn't play very good defense. Um, direct quote from Mr. From coach Valdez crone, you should be starting, but you can't guard a water bottle. That was a direct quote from Mr. Valdez in front of the whole team, and they all laughed at me. That was awesome. Awesome. But but here's the thing. I was too pretty on offense, and it's not fair to America. I I totally understand. Hillsborough County. (laughs) Of course. Hillsborough County. So so give us the uh, Piazza clone experiment. What do we end up with? All right. So all of us, we're going into a uh, a, – lab i'm gonna, steve i want to ask you this right so here are the five actually in this as well so five uh five attributes that i have for cloning the best base shore basketball player ever one is who would you pick for the best for their jump shot we'll let melissa go first john blocker <laughs> i don't know honestly i was busy i was like john blocker wouldn't even say that white i was on top of the thing going number one I don't know. <laughs> John Blocker is the best. Okay, you're gonna take John Blocker's jump shot. That, that's His jump shot. John Blocker's jump shot literally did not change since fifth grade. I know how we can do this. I know how we can do this. Can you give me give me three choices? Yeah, give, yeah, multiple choices. That will help me. Okay. Ooh, you're gonna have to help me out with Steve. So I'm gonna say shooting. You have to put uh, Jonathan Johnson in there. Brian Peterson. Who else was in really, really good from JJ Garnett. Okay, I don't remember seeing him play a lot. I remember seeing him play a lot. So okay. So Brian was... Peterson. Going with the Brian right. Peterson on that one because John John's name been coming up too many times tonight already. <laughs> gotcha. We gotta share the wealth. Share the wealth. All right. What about what about defense? Um, I put I picked Derek Smith. Derek. Andrew you uh, put in there, maybe. Andrew didn't graduate from Mayshore, but we could list him and uh Jojo Santiago, which is way before both of you. Although Melissa okay. was a baby in the classroom with Jojo Santiago. Oh, like he held me in the pictures? I don't know that. I just I just remember the pictures. You were little, he was there. So those are the three I would say. All right. Um athleticism. Mm. Oh. I always said that Jonathan Johnson was the most. Wait, 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 wait. Did Melissa pick one of those three? Oh, yeah. Uh, but again, yeah, well, yeah, I said for the jump shot, I said Brian Peterson, but I didn't really have legitimate memories of his jump shot. It was just like I said, we had said other players' names more frequently tonight, and I, you know, thought we should like good. even, out, good. even what out, about the the out. What about the defensive player? Derek Andrick or Jojo Santiago? Who would you pick out of those three? Me? Yeah, you. I would pick, well, I didn't know Santiago. So, I mean, wasn't I a baby? You're saying I was in the classroom yeah. and he was like a, a, a man when I was a kid. Yeah. Yes. Yep. So, who were the other, other two again? Uh, Derek and Andrick. <sighs> I feel like in my memory, Andrick was everything. Okay. Was so, we got Andrick, we got Peterson from uh, Melissa. Um, Maybe I should finish the last couple of <laughs> items. <laughs> so to be easier for Melissa, right? Oh. Basketball I IQ. Hope, I just hope, I hope you're not like putting this on like some kind of animated thing and then you're going to hold up my superhero basketball player to make, you know, get me back for the Yugo thing. That's a really good idea though. That's a really good idea. No, yeah, it's a good idea. So I was going <laughs> to do something else, but I'll do that too. Okay. <laughs> We'll let Steve have a turn for the people that are trying to actually like make educated. 
you know, and, and like to make an actual basketball superhero with these five powers? Well, only because I'm the oldest and have been around for two centuries, I'm going to go Reggie Sanford as the best defender. Uh, basketball IQ, I'm going to go with John Edwards. There's a, I mean, you know, there's you could name other than Scott Crone, you could name hundreds. I mean, 50 guys. But so that's who I would pick. Is there any other? What other? Uh, Passing ball handling. Derek Smith was the great. I mean. Tom Dibble's got a great line in the Tampa Tribune. Derek Smith will uh, serve up the assist, score the basket, cook the popcorn, hand out the Slurpee, and he'll even clean up afterwards. I mean, he was he could do it all. So I'm going to go Derek Smith on that one. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I would too. Um, <laughs> are you scoring it? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm a no, – He's pretending – no, he doesn't even have anything. He's turning the light on his phone so that he can just, he's watching the countdown of the clock because he knew we were supposed to pass minutes. So he's like. It's not true. I'm not in a I, feel like, I feel like we are back in 1994-95's typing class with you two. Scotty, I missed you. I missed you for 20 something years. I really did. I really did. And I wondered about you and I'm so happy to see you smiling and looking healthy and strong and truly, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I'm going to say you don't look a day over 42. No, wait, I'm, I'm 40. Over. I'm 42. <laughs> you don't look a day over 44. Right. Yeah. Melissa, I said he looked a day over, didn't look a day over 21. Yeah. I'm going to go with Steve. <laughs> This is fun. Well, you know, I, I go back to the ball handling, and I, know, I think you guys touched on this in one of the podcasts I watched, but my senior year, one of the issues was we didn't have – No. I'm not my senior year, my junior year, we didn't have a point guard. That's right. Right? And and I would have been curious to see if they would have brought up John Blocker. I don't think – he's not going to make a difference against Malone because they were just – they were way too good. But I would have been curious to see our flow of our offense, have John run in the point. And I thought, like, they had – actually called him up and he didn't want to go or something that's exactly what happened john blocker said like, to I, in a podcast yeah what i mean dude what, what do you what do you miss holding hands with jed kirby all day what, why, why can't you come to the bar scene play with the big boys john <laughs> blocker blocker claims blocker says that uh he wanted to he was either going to play with his guys or he didn't want to like be a part of a group that he wasn't part of that was his thinking yeah I'll tell you what, though, I love John as a point guard because, you know, he, my senior year, he was our point guard, and um, he, he knew when to give you the ball and when, and when not to give you the ball, more importantly. So, like, I remember, like, almost like I would read his mind or his looks on his face, like, I'd do three down or whatever, whatever we were doing, and I'd, get the, I'd be open in the corner, and I'd see him see me wide open, and he wouldn't pass it to me because I could see, in, like, having the internal talk saying, Crone, you just missed the last three threes. I'm not going to give you another three again. <laughs> That's exactly what would happen. Yeah, but, but he was really good about getting the person, the ball, when they started to feel it. Um, really good really good at getting the, the offense in flow. So, But, yeah, I would be curious to see what it would happen if you would have brought him up because I wasn't a point guard. Bo wasn't a point guard. Rod wasn't yeah, a point guard. I mean, guard. That, team, that team needed Andrick Frazier to come back. If you bring Andrick Frazier back, you're putting 15 more points on the board and you're subtracting about 10 turnovers. And yeah. under that scenario, it is possible to have won the – to, to compete for that state title game at the final four. But, you know, all of our audience is waiting with bated breath. What clone did you come up with from Mr. Piazza's lab? Oh, no, I didn't come up with a clone. I, I thought it would just be kind of a cool idea, oh. talking point. <laughs> talking point. Here, I, I am the clone. I'm Plus, Scott Clone. Right. I'm Scott Whoa. Clone. This is not a clone. Is a copy of something else that already um, exists. You're talking about. You're, you're copying certain attributes from everybody. But you're, you're, I, I don't. The, clone is what you meant, but I like the whole crone clone Scott clone thing. I see what you did there. We'll talk about it later. It's okay. Okay. Crone clone. That is excellent. Um, okay. Let's uh, let's turn our attention to your senior year, 1995. That's the miracle at Ramey season. This subject matter has been covered a lot, but I'm curious as to your perspective. That team goes to the Final Four and has a lot of famous moments, obviously. But why the struggles? I mean, I think there were some injuries uh, early. Um, I think the schedule was hard. Why did the record end up so 
un bayshore like in 94, 95? Yeah, I mean, great question. I, I'll, uh, I remember right before school even started, I remember we went to the USF basketball camp and it was like me, Jed, I think, I think Blocker was there, maybe a couple, few others. I mean, basically our starting five was there and some other players. Um, but I remember like other, other schools come walking by and they're like, oh my God, is that Bayshore Christian? And they were like laughing at us. Dude, I was so embarrassed. I was like, oh my God. I was like, we got to win. I mean, we, we have to do, you know, we have to, because I mean, if you look at the, the, you know, the last two years, two state final fours, Jonathan Johnson, Derek, Andrick, um, you know, it, it, it's, we didn't, here's the thing. We didn't have, we had a whole bunch of role players, but then on top of that, we didn't have any depth, right? So, because we lost, if I remember correctly, Polito, we lost Polito, we lost Tree. Well, that's huge. Yeah, that's so, right, that's right. Yeah, I think, I think, honestly, all year, we only went like seven deep, maybe. Yeah. So that was a big issue. I was injured for, for um, a lot of the year. I mean, from what I remember is um, we got off to a pretty good start. I remember getting off to a really good start. I remember I was, I was leading the team scoring for like a good, through the Christmas tournament. I remember my game against Orangewood Christian, I had like 16 halfway through the second quarter. And then on one of my jump shots, I came down on some dude's ankle and I got a really, really bad sprain. And I battled that. Was that at home? Was that the game at home against Orangewood? No, 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 no. It was, um, it was away. I think, I don't know okay. if it was a Christmas tournament or if it, if we played at, if we played there, but it wasn't at Bayshore. Okay. But, um, yeah, I messed up my ankle really bad. I, I missed like two weeks, if I remember correctly. And, and even when I came back, I just didn't have any type of jump or bounce. So, and, and here's the thing, I'm not trying to make excuses. I, um, you know, it's, everybody's dinged up at some point during the year. My problem is I got in my head. I, I was, I, my, I was my own worst enemy because I was, I was super streaky. Um, when I got confident, the ball was going in. And then when, when I lost that, which happened all the time, you know, I wasn't making anything. I just disappeared. So it was kind of more of a mental, mental game with me I struggled with. Um, it was really easy to get me out of my game. But another player didn't have to do that necessarily. I would just do it for them. So, um, but uh, yeah, um, you know, it was, it, it, we were, our team was very bipolar. And I, I know that we were very embarrassed as far as, you know, trying to live up to the Bayshore standard. Um, yeah, I, was gonna, I, was gonna, I wanted to ask you, did I ever say anything mean to you? Um, because I was very obviously mean to people who weren't living up to our standard. So I hope, I hope not. <laughs> I think he's, he blocked it out. I think clearly he was. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. I mean, my, my therapist, my therapist is working through it, Steve. You know, I don't, I don't cry in the fetal position in my tidy whities anymore. Um, so. That's good. That's good. But yeah, I mean, so yeah, finish your thought. I'm sorry. So, um, yeah, so we were, I remember there's tension on the team. You're kind of at each other, like blaming people, like whose fault and all this kind of stuff. And coach Sam, you know, was a very, um, calming presence. Good. I think we need to, we need definitely needed a lot of that at that time. Um, struggling with expectations, but what I will say, you know what, I wouldn't trade my senior year in that, that season that record because i honestly take it as like a badge of honor in a way yes. because we've got so many teams that went 30 something and five and went to the state final four and, and didn't didn't win it and they had a ton of talent well we didn't have as much talent as a lot of, as most of those teams just not old and we still found a way to get it done when it counted i completely know? agree i come so in a weird in a weird way i take i take pride that, that we're the only team in the state in the in the state of florida's basketball history that made it to state with a losing record. Yeah, I completely agree. That's exactly right. Um, yeah. And something to be proud of. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very proud for you guys of that team as, as an alumnus, because you're exactly right. And it was a very difficult schedule. There was lots of injuries. And you said there was a lot of internal tension in the desire to live up to the expectations. That's really cool to hear. Um, who did, did you, who did you take to home, uh, to homecoming or the dance, or whatever? Was that Amanda? No, yeah, she went, you know, ever since she saw me with my shirt off, she wouldn't talk to me. So um, yeah. Actually, I went, I went solo. I went solo with like Mark Anderson. We all went to like the thrift store and got like these polyester leisure suits. So. Do you remember that, Melissa? Do you remember them coming in the polyester? I, I feel like, I feel, I mean, I probably, that, that, that was to, probably. That, yeah, that was, that was to distract all the, everybody from uh, the fact that no girls wanted to go with us. So. I don't think I was at allowed to be at that dance maybe i don't know so i missed it but i can totally picture you know the charade was this a, was this a footloose situation 
Yes, what? she had a the foot dance. Piece. Yes, you can't go to the dance. Okay, I also never saw Footloose, but I oh, did. Yes, you went to reference that. I did if learn that we we did a number though. We did um Mr. Myers taught us like the dance from Foot was was Footloose. Yeah, at the end, everybody cut, everybody cut. We did like yeah, a yeah. flash mob of it at one of the Bayshore fundraiser events or something. That is classic. Where Mr. Um, Mr. Piazza, remember? Oh, you could pay a dollar to sledgehammer his car or something. Oh, very good. I don't, yeah, I didn't know that. What happened there? Uh, I don't really remember. Like it was I, part of homecoming week was the car destruction, Mr. Piazza's car destruction. Well, it could be completely unrelated to homecoming. I don't know, but everybody had like their own little booth or something or their own, there was like a big stage. We did the um, footloose dance on the red top. It was like a big whole day of like family cookout. That's gotta be either... Uh, it's got to be homecoming or what they called Oktoberfest for like Halloween time of year. Um, it's got to be one of those two. I mean, I would guess. There's a couple more on Facebook. Mike Rudolph is really throwing the laughing emojis. And he says, y'all paid $14. He paid $14 for his. Yeah, he was food. part of it. And uh, he said, Scott, Ronnie, Mark, and myself Ronnie. did polyester suits. Ronnie Letaw? Ronnie Letaw. Yep. Didn't That's he play really baseball good. like at LSU or something? Or no, maybe that was somebody else. That was him. Well, Letaw's Le 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 got a uh, – Letaw lived up here in Atlanta, uh, in the greater Atlanta area, and his son's a big-time baseball guy. He and I were talking about that on Facebook, so um, I'm sure that's probably the case or something like it. Rudolph no, is was saying it. yes. Rudolph is saying yes. Okay. Well, maybe maybe not, but that Mike, Mike thinks so. But uh, that that's really funny. So – Went to homecoming on your own with the polyester suits, you, Scott, Ronnie, and, and Mark. What was uh, graduation like? What was the end of the year? Were you ready to get out of Bayshore? I mean, a lot of teenagers are glad to get out of Christian school. It's only when we get older, we, we realize how great it was. What was your feelings at that time? Yeah, um, I mean, again, Bayshore was just a family away from my family. Um, really small school. Um, my, my parents sheltered me a lot. So when I went away to school to Tallahassee, I mean, it was a huge culture shock. I mean, I made the mistake of joining a fraternity and then taking an 8 a.m. class and that did not go over very well. So my first semester at Florida State, I had an A, a B minus, a B and an F. Or no, a C minus and an F. A, oh no, an A, a C, a C minus and an F. They gave me a 1.9 GPA and put me on academic probation. And when I got home on Christmas break, woo, woo. Oh. so yeah, I got my, my, my stuff together, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a culture shock, especially um, from a social, you know, situation. But I, but what I will say is Bayshore, you know, kind of taught you um, the dangers and, you know, and, and the repercussions of making stupid decisions. And, and I felt like, you know, while I had my fun, did my thing, but, you know, I always had Bayshore and, you know, Pastor Sagers and um, a lot of, uh, gosh, who were the other Bible teachers? But I just remember they, they were that's there. Right. When, yeah, when stuff could have gone out of control. So it's cool. That, that, that's very good. And, and you make a very good point about how Bayshore uh, prepared us. And, you know, the Bible says, I think in Ecclesiastes, you know, that, that God will be with our sin for a season, but then you got to come out of that season. Right. Rick, who, who are your, so I had Miss Jordan and Mr. Cray for Bible. That's going way back. Oh, Brian Cray? Yeah. Brian Who, Cray? Yes, Brian Cray. Yeah, I mean, there's stories. So uh, who who was your Bible teacher? Because, and you mentioned Pastor Sagers. I think Bruce Williams was there during the 90s. Pastor so Bruce? You, you go way back, like like Melissa, uh, all, as you mentioned, all the way back to earlier times. So who was your Bible teachers at Bayshore? Um. Remember Paula White? Oh no. Oh, yeah. Here we go again. Oh. Here we go. <laughs> she taught me sex education. And she was, <laughs> she was <laughs> sorry. She was a very attractive woman back then, especially for a middle-aged school schoolboy, right? And so I remember having the biggest crush on her. And then but it got it got really weird because she started doing sex education. And then she would tell us about how her and Randy would get down after um, making love. 
in the Christian, you know, very, they would, they would get, they would get out of bed and they would kneel and pray after. Right, He's right hiding. After that. This is exactly like the cheerleader episode. You were hiding during the cheerleader, cheerleader episode as well. It was this for the same name though. Like, I was just. It's... What's I'm interesting it. about this story, Scott, I kid you not. When I took Bible in the eighties, we, we had a, a, a lady Bible teacher who, and they also taught us sex education during the Bible class. And uh, I just never forget uh, Chris Patterson oh. raised the hand and saying, please tell us your qualifications for teaching this class and get out of my class right now. That's, that's all very interesting and also very odd, I think. But uh, it looks like we survived it. Do you know, I saw her on TV, on national TV, like three years ago. She was Donald Trump's uh, yeah, yeah. Um, preacher. Spiritual advisor. Spiritual, spiritual advisor. advisor. Yeah. yeah, I was like, what? So Rudolph, Rudolph is saying, Mrs. Wright, multiple question marks. Jimmy Schramm right. says, Mrs. White for Bible. She always kept my attention. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin Winant says, I miss that part. I mean, this is one of the funniest episodes we have ever done. This is... This is a legendary episode. That is really funny. So Mrs. Wright's Bible. It looks like you're looking at something there, Scott. What do you got going? I'm um, just seeing if I missed anything story-wise. Yeah, I'm give us give all you got. I, I do have to apologize to my team, and I have to apologize to Coach Sam. Um, because of my awesome defense, that's, you know, um, sarcastic right there. Um, people may not remember this, but we, I am the reason that we lost in districts my senior year to, to Lakeland Christian. Why not? Yeah, I am. I am. So it was like it was like inbounds play, and it was uh, I forgot how many seconds. Maybe I'm 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 gonna be off on this, but maybe, let's say there's ten seconds left. They have a ball under the under their basket. What is that? Oh God! Oh. I want to make sure I get that on there. Graduation uh, picture, 1995. Yeah. I mean, I think, you're, I think you're more handsome today than back then, right? Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah look I mean, at Jen. I'm, look at Jen, I'm, I'm, I'm though. Hi, Jen. Uh, I'm on Jimmy Markham, yeah. Very good. Is that Ronnie Lee? I can't really see yeah. that. that yeah, good. it's Ronnie. Very good. All right, so sorry, I was interrupting. You were talking about your great defense and you were apologizing to your teammates. Yeah, so I think there's like 10 seconds left or whatever. Lakeland Christian has the ball um, under their basket and <laughs> we're in the huddle. Coach Tim goes, whatever you do, don't let them get you know inside of you, you know, on the baseline or whatever, right? Don't let him get in front of you on the baseline. Got it, coach. We've done this a million times. What do I do? I let the dude get right in front of me, catches it, and puts it, puts it in, lays it in, and they go on to win the game. I didn't even foul him. I'm like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> I'm, surprised, I'm surprised. I'm surprised, coach. Coach Sam. I got it. I can answer it. Wait, wait. Melissa has an answer. Melissa has an I answer. I just wanted to answer the question when you said, oh. what am I doing with my life? And I was going to say, you're living in a van down by the river. That there was you go. <laughs> Living the dream. Do you know what's awesome about this? All right, so one of my job descriptions, I'm an underwriter for progressive insurance for homeowners. All right, so like what do, one of the things I do is like somebody, will, like one of our agents will call in and let's suppose they, they want to sell a policy because they want to insure this guy's house for two and a half million dollars, right? So I have to sit there and evaluate that risk and go through and decide whether or not uh, if we're going to insure that house. How funny is it that a guy in a van homeless is determining whether a guy who looks at two and a half million dollar home gets insurance or not. <laughs> I love the I mean, irony. How the irony? I mean, is that, it's the awesome, irony. Isn't it? That is so awesome. That is, and and this is a gratuitous plug for your business as well to drag on or to pick up new clients. Correct? No. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so got a, John Arville is commenting again. Harville says, this is classic. Thanks for the memory, Scott. So that's really good. Um, this has been a classic. Melissa, do you have any final questions before we start to wrap up? We've had them for an hour. I could go on forever. Scott, you sure you don't have any more stories? Because these I got all kinds of good. stuff, dude. But, but stuff we can actually say on the air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did our cheerleader, why did our cheerleaders quit my senior year? There you go. Breaking news. What happened? What year was your senior year? 95. Well, I probably quit because I'm sure Jonathan Johnson graduated and then I probably didn't care anymore. I don't know. But like, no, there was like something happened between the coach and the, and the 
the cheerleaders and like everybody quit. Was this related to the story where they they worked real hard on a routine and then they were told they were not allowed to do it because it was like, uh, you know, the music? That wasn't it? No, because that we ended up, we got to do it. They just had to, we had to find a way to get the lyrics out. That's right. I, that's right. I remember that. But honestly, this is sad. I don't know who my coach was that year. I know I had Miss Pyland, um, but probably Scott, I don't know. Was that also the year you took your shirt off? I mean, maybe we, we maybe everybody <laughs> traumatized. Maybe everybody just the next year they were like, I can't go through that. We saw what Amanda had to go through. So luminescence. <laughs> I don't know. You had just started working out at the Y. So Yeah, no, so you'll start filling out senior year a little bit, but I, I was a late bloomer in everything in life, so that's right. I just I, I, have, I have nothing but um but positive memories though. So for whatever that's worth. Apparently, I do too, according to your yearbook. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But you could, okay. But I feel like we had that type of, that was the nature of yes. our. Family. It was a yes. very, like, sarc- Obviously smart, that was- ass, like, excuse me, smart, Alec, dry, like, po- fun, always poking fun at the other's expense, but never really crossing the line. Like, always messing with the other person, but not, not I didn't, I don't recall taking it personally. I just remember laughing hard. Dude, when you have, when you have Andy Polito, Jed Kirby, and John Blocker on your team, you cannot take yourself seriously. It's just constant bulliness all day, every day. So I, they That's toughen exactly me up. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. They toughen me up. Hey, uh, Scott, you oh, know no. any, I know you have to have some Bo Heinley stories. I mean, you gave us well, a really good one with his dad. Here's the thing with Bo. I, I'm con- I'm concerned. I don't have any direct evidence of this, but what I will say is I can almost bet my life savings that his dad would actually take Bayshore Christian video, basketball video, and cut out all the video of just Bo making shots and making good passes and dribbling, cut it together, put it together in one mixtape, and he would actually tuck Bo in at night, and they would sit there while Bo's falling asleep, and they would watch Bo's highlights. And I also, I also remember, I'm not, I don't have any, again, direct evidence on this, but I'm pretty sure that Bo's dad paid off Coach Volpe and Coach Sam to let Bo take that final shot you know, instead of me. So I just wonder how much I wonder how, how much their uh, dignity cost. That's all I want to know. That is that is a classic, man. That I'm joking a- with all of that. Oh, but we love Bo. We're very thankful. Bo gave us a lot of uh, video, which we're posting, and of course, got oh, us awesome. a miracle at Ramey tape. Justin Winant says he loved Bo's dad's car. What was Bo's dad's car? Does anybody know? I don't know. Bo had a cut. The only I only had the, the only person with the worst car in, in high school was me. Um, <laughs> Bo's, Bo had a cut. It was a like half car and half truck. What was it? What was it? What kind of car is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Jonathan the, Johnson. I got I got one Jonathan Johnson story. Okay, yeah. um, my mom wanted me to, to tell this story because she's still pissed at him. <laughs> So John, people don't know this, but Jonathan Johnson basically lived in, on the same street I did. We grew up together and um, he was a nut about basketball, obviously. Uh, South of Kansas. Yeah, I was on Aline, but it was basically right, right there. there. Yeah. So, um, that's, that's, that's he used to there. call and harass me to pick him up, to drive him to, this is during the summer, right before going into his senior year, so it was my junior year, um, for, it, for me to pick him up, take him to Bayshore, and we would play in, the, in like August. We get in the gym and we play one on one full court with a running clock, one on one, for like four quarters. Take a break and do. So we played two, played for like two hours. And I was like, John, I'm going home, bro. I can't do this anymore. You're you're, you're nuts. You're ridiculous. I'm going home. So he practiced even more, and then he'd walk back and he'd walk by my house. He would come inside. He would eat like a giant box of cereal, and then like all this like all our meat and, and sandwich meat and all that kind of stuff. You eat all of that. Then beat me what, in my video what time of day? What time of day was this? What time of the, day? This, this is middle of the day, but this is over the summer. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so my parents are at work. <laughs> so, so he comes, he, so he, beat, he, he, hum, he humiliates me in Bayshore's gym. He comes over, eats all me, me and my parents' food. He beats me in my video games and then he beats me in a free throw contest at my house. And then he just walks away. And then my mom comes home and my mom goes, who ate all of our food? 
And I was like, it's Jonathan. And she would just take it out on me. I mean, he must have ate like six hundred dollars worth of my food growing up, at least. Oh, that's awesome. That is classic. We got another uh, Facebook post. Mike Rudolph says Ronnie had the Chiraco. What's a Chiraco? I don't, I don't remember. Is that a type, of car? a type it of car? It must be a type of car. I don't know. Yeah. So, Melissa, you need to find that on your phone as well. You found the Chiraco. You go. Yeah. But uh, wow. this has been one of the great. I mean, so um, we're going to wrap up. Melissa, you don't have to find it. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. <laughs> I was ready. I was. <laughs> no. But um, do you have any last questions? This has been one of the greatest episodes of all time. I mean, you got the cheerleader episode, literally is the funniest episode of all time. This is probably right there at number two. I've, I mean, this has just been awesome. Melissa, what are your final thoughts or questions for uh, Scott Crone, class of 1995? My final thoughts? I'm just glad we found you, buddy. I'm so glad we found you. And I'm happy that you are are being and going to all these national parks. I'm actually in a national park fan group on Facebook and I just live vicariously through all these people like you that are there and taking it in in real life. And I think um, that's just so remarkable for this phase in our life where we're just kind of transitioning from like, I don't know, everybody's a grown up now, but I love to see, I love to see that you look so you look just like you did like i remember you and i'm just that's happy actually, that that's actually an insult thank you no no no. okay i i look exactly like you did after you were like when you came back and you were like the stud like a beefcake all like better like we we're going with that up. okay yeah i'm just happy to see your smile and i'm happy to laugh with you and pick up like we never left off absolutely that's absolutely. a face or family kind of thing that's exactly absolutely. right Scott, you ought to, um, when you get the chance, post, I mean, I'm sure you are taking pictures and stuff as you're visiting these places. Feel free to post them in the timeline or maybe send them to Melissa, direct message through the Facebook thing or yeah. uh, at least put them on the timeline, you know, so we can see where you're, you're visiting. That would be really great. And the last thing I got for you tonight is, uh, is this has been a great show, a lot of great Bayshore memories and I say it every episode because you don't know people may not may only watch one, may, you know, maybe just this one, but Bay Shore mattered. If you look at our graduates per capita, their impact on their profession, the, the lives around them, uh, all of those things uh, have mattered perhaps more than any other school. All of you guys in the 90s, guys and gals, uh, were spectacular people, and uh, it's an honor to know all of you. And again, very thankful you came on. You were part of two great Bayshore teams, the end of Empire, Coach Valdez's final year, and then, of course, Coach Sam's Miracle at Ramey Final Four team. That's something special. And, uh, I mean, I'm going to be telling these, I'm going to be telling these Scott Crone stories to everybody now forever. So <laughs> um, we'd love to hear, have you back. If you can make it into Florida the next time we do a, a Valdez, Coach Sam dinner, uh, try to get that RV heading towards – Yeah, Miami. no, I I'm still based in Tampa. I'm actually in the process. I'm in Amarillo, Texas right now, but I'm heading back towards to Florida for Thanksgiving and for the holidays. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's still, I'm still based out of Florida. I'm just uh, doing this van thing for a year or two. So that's really, but yeah, great. I'll be in town. I'll be in town. Yeah. Cause I'd love to get together. Cause I remember, uh, being around that team, the 94 team and the 95 team. And, uh, those were great times and great players and great guys. And you were one of them. So thank you again. Thank you for Melissa. It's a star studded lineup. My uh, guest co-host uh, rejoined me tonight. That made it all the more better having uh, you here with us. I know you're a teacher and you're saying, can't say more and better together. But uh, thank you both. Um, and uh, we look forward to the next podcast. Scott, thank you. Melissa, thank you. And uh, thank everyone for watching. Take care. All right. everyone. Thanks, everybody. Go Bayshore.